Hello there, my fellow loyalist battle brothers, and welcome back to our weekly episode from the Space Marine Chapter's lore. The winners of my latest poll, and the Astartes we are gonna start covering today, are another one of those rather unlucky chapters throughout some of their history. Thankfully, because of the returned Gilliman, they do make a comeback. Sort of. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Sives of the Emperor. As we always do when we cover multiple video chapters, today we shall start with some focus on their history. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The origins of the Sives of the Emperor, sometimes also known as the Emperor's Sives, hail back all the way to the dark days of the Horus Heresy in the early years of the 31st millennium. They were originally part of the Ultramarine Legion's 199th Aegida Company, which was assigned by Robot Gilliman to the world of Sofa as permanent protection. The assigned Astartes took pride in their duty, and later adopted the cross scythe symbol upon their pauldron related to those that they protected, the farmers on the planet. A ritual of clearing the area about the research site on Mount Pharos for over a century was the precept for the use of the Sive symbol. This simple, rural tradition gave rise to the Aegida Company's choice of icon. The world was given the classification of restricted due to the fact that Sofa possessed a strange pre-imperial biotechnological device known as the Pharos which was located within the massive geographical landmark of Mount Pharos, from which it took the name. The strange alien device was built by an unknown Xeno civilization, which harnessed the psychic energy of empathy to aid navigation inside the warp, much like the Astronomicon, but on a smaller scale. It was utilized by Robot Gilliman as a psychic beacon to attract the forces of the loyalists of the region, which had been scattered by the ruined storm to the Ultramarine's own homeworld of Macrag. The Pharos would later become a source of contention between the loyalists and the traitors. This took place when members of a Night Lord's Legion splinter fleet, under the command of Captain Krukesh the Pale, sought to claim it from the forces of Imperium Secundus during the Battle of Sofa. During this conflict, unfortunately, the loyalist Iron Warrior Warsmith Barabas Dantioch sacrificed his own life to overload the Pharos, disabling the Night Lord's fleet above Sofa and allowing the loyalist forces to prevail. After the Horus Heresy ended and the subsequent second founding occurred in 021 M31, the Sives of the Emperor took another step towards being born. Oberdei was later assigned to captain of the Aegida Company, which was maintained as a Phantom 11th Company of the Ultramarines on Sofa, even as Gilliman forced every other chapter to conform to the Codex model of 10. Quite aside from the secret shame of Imperium Secundus, the existence of the Aegida Company could have been seen as proof of the Primarch's willful and deliberate flouting of Imperial Decree a decree that he himself basically invented and his surviving brothers finally agreed upon after much conflict. Oberdei was a living, breathing reminder of what the Ultramarines considered, in their vanity, to be a mistake of Lord Gilliman. They could not erase them from the pages of history while Oberdei remained on sofa, off to that final duty that he had been given by the Primarch. As the so-called Warden of the Pharaohs, Oberdei had sworn an Oath of Moment, known as the Aegidan Oath, on the blade of Gilliman, Gladius Incandor, to protect the secrets of Sofa, which had been buried in the Pharaohs. This Oath of Moment, written in the Primarch's own hand, was kept within Mount Pharaohs along with the skull-like iron mask of the fallen Barabas Dantioch, the very first Warden of the Pharaohs. By the time Imperial Fist Primarch Rogel Dorn initiated the third founding in 001 M32, Oberdei was the last surviving member of the Aegida Company. He was not simply the reminder of a mistake, he was the embodiment of it, and the very last scrap of living proof. The time had come for the Aegida itself to be purged. In order to remove any evidence of perceived heresy on the part of Gilliman, as well as his complicity in defying the Codex Astartes itself, 
The Ultramarines Chapter Master Tigris Decon sent a representative, Chaplain Segus, to Sotha to offer Oberdei a choice of reassignment to the chapter's fifth company or to continue his watch over the Pharaohs by becoming the first chapter master of a brand new Aegida chapter. Oberdei was initially appalled by the fact that Rogel Dorn would initiate such a founding, but he reluctantly consented to becoming the chapter master of a new chapter, but with one caveat. He would change the name from Aegida to the Sives of the Emperor. To fill up the new chapter, Chaplain Segus and Brother Wenlock, along with 72 ultramarine veterans of the Orland Conquest, were assigned to join Oberdei on Sotha. The newborn Sives quickly established a fortress monastery on Sotha. From this base of operations, near the region of space known as the Damocles Gulf in the Segmentum Ultima, the chapter took it upon itself to police and safeguard the nearby mining and manufactoria settlements. As the Sives grew in power, they expanded their policing action around their homeworld of Sofa in the eastern fringe of the galaxy. After eradicating many human and alien pirates from the nearby Imperial mining colonies, they moved on to counter several orc migrations in the lower segmentums of the Imperium. They also served during the Damocles Gulf Crusade, and played a vital role in the capture of the world of Sai El Kel from the Tau Empire. However, that crusade ultimately stalled, and withdrew when it was learned that the newly encountered Tyranids were heading to the realm of Ultramar, the home of the Ultramarines. In more recent history, the Sives of the Emperor, along with their allies, the Lamenters chapter, were almost destroyed during the invasion of the Imperium by the Tyranid High Fleet Kraken. The remnants of the chapter stood on the edge of oblivion. The few brothers that remained swore to spend their lives seeking out and annihilating the remaining Tyranid splinter forces within the Ultima Segmentum and beyond, and all of this was done while they sought new recruits to replenish the chapter's shattered ranks. Since the destruction of the homeworld by High Fleet Kraken, the Sives of the Emperor have become a far more secretive chapter. That's because many of the chapter's firstborn battle brothers were infected with the genetic corruption of the Gene Stealer's Kiss during the invasion. The Astartes were mentally strong enough to resist the call and mental control of the brood mind, but they were forced to wear psychic dampening hoods to lessen its power. For a time, the surviving space marines of the Sives of the Emperor navigated through space on their last starship and mobile fortress monastery, the battle barge known as the Heart of Sofa which was then renamed into the heart of Cronus. The chapter was but a shadow of its former glory, but it was a hard and elite fighting force, and they could be found fighting anywhere where the Tyranids could be found in the Ultima Segmentum. The chapter was also forced to break with its past traditions and operated with only two full companies. The survivors of Sofa were amalgamated to form one company, referred to only as the Battle Company, while all the new recruits to the chapter, which the Sives actively sought from any suitable worlds they passed, were inducted into the chapter's other full company, the Scout Company. Upon his resurrection, Gilliman decreed that those chapters which had suffered the worst at the hands of the myriad enemies assailing humanity would be granted a great boon. They were to be among the first chapters of the Adeptus Astartes to receive the newly created primary space marines of the Ultima founding as reinforcement. With their ranks now replenished by the new primary Astartes, the Sives of the Emperor were now able to once again take the fight to the archenemy and the other various threats looming over the Imperium of Man. In the wake of the Indomitus Crusade, Lord Commander of the Imperium Gilliman chose the Sives of the Emperor as one of the chapters tasked with defending the growing territory of his own realm of Ultramar. The Sives of the Emperor's flagship and mobile fortress monastery was known to carry the chapter's Primaris brothers on missions detailed by Robut Gilliman in the era Indomitus. But over one Terran century later, the firstborn space marines of the chapter had been whittled down to a tiny complement of only veterans and officers. The entire complement of these remaining original Sives of the Emperor accompanied the expedition of Belisarius Cole himself to Sofa, 
to once again study the ancient artifact known as the Pharos. The Imperials were then attacked by a force of gene stealer cultists, which had managed to infiltrate the Scythe's own chapter serfs with their genetic corruption. During the battle that followed, Chapter Master Thrasius died in combat, ironically with the same gene stealer patriarch which was responsible for bringing High Fleet Kraken to Sofa to begin with. Most, if not all, the remaining firstborn marines of the size of the Emperor also died alongside Thrasius in this battle. The chapter master's final words were Ave Imperator. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the history of the size of the Emperor for today. A loyal and honorable chapter which had a rather dark and sad fate because of the Tyranids at least only as far as their firstborn marines are concerned. They do still exist, except they are now Primaris. We will honor their memory though, as I will still be doing one or even two more videos on them. Are the Scythes of the Emperor among your favorite chapters? What do you like or dislike most about them? Let us all know your thoughts in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.